Welcome to Puff Daddy Reef. Today we're taking a trip to Tropic Isle Aquarium in Framingham, Massachusetts. So we made it to Tropic Isle Aquarium. Let's go inside and see what's in there. Tropic Isle is one of the biggest aquarium stores in the greater Boston area and they typically have a good selection of fish. I ended up just getting these emerald crabs though because there was no fish that really uh, stunned me and kind of caught my eye. So I got these guys and I brought them home. Alright, so here's my bag of emerald crabs. They were $18 for two, so about $48 for the four crabs. They're all doing pretty good. And then there was a coupon, which Tropic Isle typically has, uh, depending on how much you buy, it gives you some amount of free or discounted livestock. And so that meant that my total cost for the crabs came out to be about seven and a half dollars per crab, which is pretty good. That's about what you end up getting when you buy them online. Um, actually on Live Aquaria, if you just buy a single crab, it comes out to be about $8.99. So it's a pretty good deal. You can still get good deals while shopping local. Um, often you have to make use of their coupons. So there's the little crabs. They're just hanging out. Um, one, two, three, four. They're all doing really well. Three of the four are doing really good. One of them is just uh, a little shell-shocked pun intended um, or something like that so we'll see how they do uh, but next I'm going to drip acclimate the crabs and so that process for me I always use this uh, airline tubing let me move this camera back a little bit so I tend to use this airline tubing I start a siphon and then I tie a knot into it so pretty simple process uh, one thing you need to do is find a place to actually stick the tube uh, so it doesn't slip and sometimes I stick it in between my flipper mag float and that holds everything pretty well. So another thing you want to do when you're drip acclimating is make sure that you turn off your auto top off. You can hear mine going. I did not turn it off immediately. So now that I got that off We'll start the drip acclimating and I just let the volume of that double about twice, sometimes three times if I'm feeling a little generous, dump out half the water and then get them in the tank. While they're acclimating, we'll do a quick feature on this tank. We didn't spend much time on it last week because we were talking all about the new coral planting that I did, but I definitely have a lot of coral in here. There's a really nice focus of it. I have a lot of coral in here that I do need to plant as well, and these are zoas that I want to use to make little zoa islands in the tank. Overall, this tank is doing pretty good. I've noticed that this little uh, panova coral, it's not a panova, it's a, it's a, it's a porites, it's like a uh, encrusting green porites. Um, that coral is getting a little bit darker, and I'm not sure why. Also, some of these uh, zoas are getting a little bit darker. Um, but most of the zoas are doing really well and the thing that's doing really amazing is this clam it's loving it now this is a little bit more dirty tank and and clams do like it i also don't have any hard corals competing with it for coral and i do decently regulate water changes but i don't do any dosing of calcium and alkalinity um, but he seems to be doing really good and is brightly colored and the other softies are also doing really great the toadstools and everything are having a good time and this little clownfish man I need to get him in the big tank quick 
And so that, so he can spend some time, maybe try to pair with that uh, big maroon clownfish. Uh, we call him Bling because he has that little blingy necklace. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get these crabs into here um, in just a minute. But next video, what I'm gonna spend some time doing is catching all of these fish. Uh, I need to catch them to get them into my quarantine tank. Once they're in there, then I can get them in the main tank. And I think what I'll do with this tank is turn it into something really cool. I wanna do invertebrate only. Uh, in order to make sure that any sort of ick or fish related diseases can die off of my invertebrates before putting it in the main tank. I can't quarantine the invertebrates with things like copper and other things, so I want them to have their you know, separate environment. But I'm thinking maybe something really cool like a mantis shrimp. So leave me a question or leave me a comment below if you think a mantis shrimp is cool and also would you be more interested in seeing a peacock mantis shrimp that likes to smash uh, critters and invertebrates or a stabbing mantis shrimp that will stab little uh, morsels with its claws? You can probably find internet videos on either one of them, but let me know which one do you think I, can, I'll, I should get. And then for snails and stuff that I'm quarantining in the tank, I'll just have to have them in a protective box um, that's shielded so that the mantis shrimp both cannot see it and cannot get to it. If it sees it, I'm pretty sure whatever I put it, them in will be destroyed pretty quick. So let's get these guys in the tank. Okay, so now just about the time the water got a little bit too low in the tank. I'm gonna take out this siphon. All right, let's take care of these bubbles. Now this is salt water because I'm bringing the tank back up the level from the salt water I removed. We've got three crabs I'm putting in. The other guy for some reason didn't seem to revive so I don't know if I was just given a dead crab or he just didn't make transit. But for whatever reason these guys are moving like crazy. Well, just dropped them. Uh, but they're moving like crazy. They're really nice crabs. This one's got big pinchers so I got to be a little bit careful. Uh, Cause who knows, he could jump out at you. Uh, but we're gonna put him in nice and gently. There we go. Swims down, he's gonna find a spot to enjoy his time in the tank. Now the other two are really tiny crabs, uh, but I like the tiny ones cause they can get into smaller areas. And I feel like they're less likely to attack uh, different things in your tank. So we're gonna start them out in three different corners of the tank so they can establish little territories. And that guy will be responsible for the left side of the tank, cleaning out any bubble algae there. And this last guy, we're gonna give him to the right side of the tank in that big pile of pallies. So if you look at this tank, ooh, that's an aggressive clownfish. You can actually see there's a little bit of bubble algae that has come back. And ever since I made that mistake and got the uh, bare insecticide in the tank, wiped out all my emerald crabs, I do see some visible uh, bubble algae in certain places. So I'm adding the crabs back because they're a good control. And now I also know that they don't completely uh, eliminate it from the tank, which is also good to know. So before I move any tank, any piece of coral from here to the big tank, I'm just gonna have to be extra, extra, extra vigilant to make sure there's no bubble algae on it. In the meantime though, I'll use the crabs to keep the levels a little bit lower in this tank. So they're all in, they're having a great time, and we'll see, we'll watch this patch of algae next week, tune in, and even though I'll be doing that big video on what I'm gonna do with the fish, uh, tune in and I'll show you if this patch of bubble algae is gone. So we're gonna focus on that patch way back there. And if that is gone, we will determine that these little emerald crabs are a success. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode of Puff Daddy Reef. We had a great time going to Tropical Aquarium. We got a bunch of emerald crabs and we put them in the tank. If you think I should put a mantis shrimp in this tank, leave a comment below and also tell me what type of mantis shrimp I should do. Should I do the ones with the big spearing things or should I do the 
ones that kind of like box and try to break the glass. There's two types of mantis shrimp. Both of them are awesome for their own reason. And tune back in next week. I'll be posting a video, of course, moving these fish over. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you are already subscribed, please hit that bell so you're notified when the next episode of Puff Daddy Reef comes out. Until then, enjoy your tanks, have fun, and happy reefing.